Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course. And this module is on troubleshooting memory problems. I'm your host, James Messer. And in this particular module, we're going to talk about a lot of different pieces of troubleshooting memory. You've now installed your memory, and the CompTIA certification exam says now you need to be able in the uh, essentials exam in section 1.3 recognize and isolate issues with memory and apply basic troubleshooting techniques. You can solve those issues. The technician exam wants you to go a little bit further. It wants to know that if you are installing memory that you want to be able to add, remove different parts of that memory and select and, and look at the installation of that memory. And finally, it also wants to be sure that you are able to troubleshoot memory components and make sure that those are working the way you would expect. When you have problems, you got to be able to solve those quickly. So what we're going to learn in this module very simply is fixing the problems with memory. We're going to talk about physical troubleshooting of the memory, and we're going to talk about software diagnostics when working with memory. We're going to start with the physical troubleshooting. And our scenario here is that we have installed some memory, we've selected memory, we've installed it, and now we're at a point where we're having problems. It's not being recognized. We're having uh, messages pop up whenever we start up our computer. What do we do? Well, the first thing we're going to want to do is check our work. We want to make sure that we got the right memory modules to begin with. This is especially useful if you started up your computer and it doesn't even recognize the memory that you've installed into it, or it's making some loud beeping noise, or something's not quite right with the way that it's operating. If you happen to be in an enterprise environment, you might have many similar personal computers in an, in an office. You may have an option to be able to swap the memory out with another computer that's exactly the same or very similar similar to the type of computer you happen to be using. You may also want to go back to your documentation. Look at the motherboard specifications. As we mentioned in a previous video, the motherboard specs are going to tell you everything you're going to need to know about the type of memory to go on that motherboard. And memory is very sensitive. You have to have exactly the type of memory that it's specifying. If it says that it's not ECC memory and it's not buffered and it has to be this speed, then you want to be sure that the memory that you acquire has all of those characteristics. Also, you want to look for some very common physical problems. Look for a loose connection in the memory that you installed. Make sure that it's seated completely into the memory slot on your motherboard. And make sure you're using the correct memory slots. Let me show you what I mean by some of these things. This is the example of memory that has not been installed properly. Can you tell why? If you look at this module, at first glance, it looks like it's just fine. But you'll notice that the left side over here is not really installed all the way. We're seeing some of the gold contacts that are up above the slot. They're supposed to be seated completely in it, very much like this one over here. And that can happen if the memory, if the system has been transported, it's been shipped somewhere. Maybe it's in an environment that shakes in, a, in an environment where you have a lot of manufacturing equipment. Sometimes memory does tend to shake right out of the system. Most of the time, these, these little clamps on the side will hold it down. But if it's not installed properly or it pops out of there, you'll see something like that. All you have to do is just push it back in there. Maybe take the memory completely out, make sure there's nothing in there that's keeping you from putting it in there into that slot and slide it back in, make sure both sides of that lock down properly. This is a tighter picture of that. So you can really see those pins stick out completely. There's no way this memory is going to be recognized in your system. So if that's the only memory in there, your system's not even going to boot. And if it's an additional module, you may find that that module is not recognized by the system. Another problem you might run into, oh, well, here's a, before we get into that, you can see this looks just fine. Uh, another problem you might run into, though, is you put this memory in and it doesn't see it. Well, we can look here. Look, that side's in. If we had a picture of the other side there, you'd see it's all very, very well put into that memory module. You can't really see a problem with the way that it was installed except it's in the wrong slot. You'll notice here in this motherboard, and again, that motherboard documentation, very important, because it will tell you exactly where to put memory. Some motherboards want you to start memory putting separate pieces of memory. Maybe it requires two memory modules, and the first two memory modules need to go in slot 0 and slot 2. The second pair needs to go in slot 1 and slot 3. That's not what you might expect. And in fact, in this particular motherboard, you can see we've installed the module, this memory module, in DIMM 3 when in reality, we should be starting in DIMM 0. So if we turn it, the system on and it sees no memory, yet we're seeing it's mounted just fine in the system, 
That's why. It's because the memory is supposed to be down here. So just because it looks like it's installed properly and it looks like it's put in there properly, in fact, it's in that first slot that we can see, it should actually go in the last slot that we could see. That's the place where it needs to go. And very often, the motherboard itself will have some type of markings on it that even tell you the different DIMM slots in order. In fact, this one even says that it requires registered ECC DIMM. So it needs buffered error corrective memory in the systems written right there. Don't even need the motherboard documentation to be able to see that piece of it. So physical problems, definitely something you want to look at when you're going through and trying to troubleshoot memory problems. It's a very quick way to do some troubleshooting. So hopefully you can find the problems quickly. If you've looked and you're in there, you've got the memory, it's mounted in the right place and it's installed properly, you've made sure those are tight connections, you may want to perform some software diagnostics. Fortunately, there's some free memory diagnostics you can pull from. And I'm going to go back to an old standby. We've already mentioned this in one of our earlier videos, something called the Ultimate Boot CD. This is a live CD. And what that means is that once you have created this CD and burned it, that you can boot a system from this CD and perform diagnostics without requiring any operating system on the hard drive of the computer. Everything runs from the CD or the DVD itself. If you want to get a copy of this, you can find it at ultimatebootcd.com. On that boot CD are a number of memory diagnostics programs. One that the industry is very familiar with, you'll see very often written up, is something called MemTest86. There was a newer version of that that came out called MemTest86+. Plus. Both of those are on this CD. There's uh, three other types of memory diagnostics program, one called Windows Memory Diagnostic from Microsoft. There's a DocMem RAM Diagnostic and te TestMem4 is also on that CD compilation. So a lot of memory uh, pieces here, a lot of memory uh, diagnostics programs on here, a lot of options for you. And it depends on maybe what you're comfortable with using, or maybe you start with one and you want to see what other options might be on some of the other testing programs. There's some differences as you go from different testing programs to another. This is what MemTest86 looks like on the screen. You can see a very simple text-based screen. Again, we're running from our CD. doesn't need a lot of graphical capabilities. And as it passes through the test, it's doing different kinds of reads and writes to the memory. And it'll tell you what it's doing in that piece. It'll even tell you what pattern it's putting into the memory and what type of memory it's found in the system, that whether it's ECC or not, whether it's a standard test, whether it's had any errors or not. And you just have this run constantly if that's what you'd like it to be able to do. Very simple process to go through. Very similar screen on the Windows memory diagnostic. You can see it's doing a similar piece. and even gives you a little more information about the type of test that it's doing. It's doing a stride six, which means it uses a stride six pattern to simulate a checkerboard of ones and zeros in the memory. And as it steps through the different sections of memory, it tells you whether it was successful or not. It even gives you the memory map as it's going. I found this one to be very informational as it goes through. Um, and, and it's very nice to be able to have this just constantly running. And it will tell you if it ever runs across any errors. In fact, it says so far, no errors have been found. So our memory so far has been operating very well in this particular system. So how long do you have that Windows Diagnostics or the MemTest Diagnostics run? How long you should let that, that go? Well, how long you got? Sometimes you only have a few hours before you can get a system back up and running. Maybe it's a server. Maybe it's something where you need to test it, do a quick once through of it, very basic overview, and then put it back into production. But most of the time, if you're setting up a new system, especially new memory, and you're not quite certain if the memory that you've installed is really working properly, having it run for 24 hours or so is very common. If it's gone 24 hours through testing memory constantly, and it still hasn't run across any errors, you're pretty probably got pretty good memory there. You can go on to find something else that might be a problem if you're troubleshooting a system. In many cases, you want to run this in normal operating conditions. If this is a system that's in a data center, maybe run the diagnostics in the data center. If it's at a user's desk, maybe we just have it run at the user's desk. We want to, in many ways, duplicate the environmental conditions. If this is in a closet that gets very, very warm, we want to run our memory test also in that very warm environment. That just makes sense. We want to be sure we're able to duplicate the particular problem that we happen to be running across.
So in review, when we start doing our troubleshooting, the physical troubleshooting, we want to be sure we confirm we're using the right memory to begin with. And then check those physical connections. Make sure we've installed the memory not only into the right slot, but make sure it's installed firmly into that slot. And we've given you some ideas about some software diagnostics you can use, like the live CD that uh, the Ultimate Boot CD comes with, where you can run just these comprehensive memory tests to make sure that the memory in your system is running perfectly. If you'd like to look at some more of our memory videos or any of our CompTIA A-plus videos, they're all free, and they're all on our website at freeaplus.com.